I will ask you today to consider a deceivingly straightforward question. How do well-meaning educators disproportionately place racial and other minority students in special education? This 48-year-old question makes visible a paradox of educational equity, namely how equity remedies for one group, students with disabilities, can create injustices for another oppressed group, racial minorities, and thus push both of them to what philosopher Martha Nussbaum described as the frontiers of justice. I urge you to reflect on this issue and consider whether researchers might be unwittingly contributing to this problem. Are there research practices that we are using that might be shaping the creation and maintenance of this problem? Can we change these practices so that educational opportunities are enhanced for all students, but particularly for those who are oppressed? I will explain that a number of factors in the research community in this literature have contributed to create and perpetuate this complex problem. I argue that the research has ignored first the historical legacies of inequality that have perp been perpetuated for certain groups in society. Historians have documented the deep entanglements of race and disability. Both groups have been considered subhuman at some point in history. Both groups have endured limited educational opportunities over generations. Researchers cannot ignore the ways in which these historical legacies are sedimented in the present. The most obvious and evident uh, signal of these legacies is found in opportunity gaps that are built in systems and infrastructures. Second, the research has ignored the intersections in the identities of these learners and the rich context in which they live and are educated. When we look at these studies, investigators tend to ask binary questions. Are minority students overrepresented or are they underrepresented? Is the cost racial bias or is the cost by child poverty? What is coming out of the research evidence, however, is a complex portrayal of a multidimensional phenomenon. We know that identity intersections and contextual contingencies matter. For example, we have uh, found that African American students are over twice as likely to be placed in special education in the intellectual disabilities category. However, Latinos are not overrepresented at the national level despite the high poverty level documented in this community. At the state level, we found in Arizona that English language learners are, were 57 uh, represented in 57% of the districts in the state. But at the same time, we found that English language learners were underrepresented in 20% of the districts in Arizona. Other studies have shown that African Americans tend to be disproportionately placed in behavioral disorders in high SES districts. While Latinos are over-identified in the LD category in high poverty districts. Again, identity intersections and contextual contingencies matter. Finally, researchers have not, under, under, no, have not documented the unintended consequences of educational inequalities and policy remedies. We have unfortunately not kept track of these issues. If special education is a life-saving strategy, we need to ask, what happens after identification? And we know that in addition to offering specialized interventions for students, there are a number of other consequences that affect students with disabilities. One is there is a higher risk of dropping out. They are more likely to receive discipline sanctions. They have lower access to college. 
and the overlap with the juvenile justice system is greater. Racial minority students with disabilities tend to be placed in more segregated settings and receive fewer related services than their white peers with the same disability diagnosis. Moving forward, therefore, the research community must embrace a historical imagination in this program of work. This will allow us to come up with data sets that are allowing us to represent the evidence in different new ways. It will allow us to examine and map the geographies of opportunities available to these communities. Researchers also need to account for the assets that students bring from their homes and communities in designing interventions and programs. We have to account for the rich diversity within each of these communities and conduct investigations that allow us to examine the contextual contingencies of how this problem is shaped in local settings. Finally, we have to rethink how we prepare researchers. It is important to consider that the next generation of researchers embrace a cultural historical imagination in their work and learn to systematically, systematically monitor the unintended consequences of policies and programs. If we follow these strategies, among others, we will enhance educational opportunities for all learners, but particularly for those who are considered different. Thank you.